This is a result of um, application of um, multi-method um, multi approach to the um, studies of medicinal plant extracts uh, using uh, this um, chromatographic technique, techniques coupled with electrochemical detection as well as with UV-vis UV detection together with essential element content. And principal component analysis was used for interpretation of this data and for comparison across uh, our results. Next, uh, for example, publication um, is, uh, is dealing with uh, fingerprint analysis of uh, Melissa officinalis, a quite uh, often used uh, commercial herb available in Poland, and uh, it's based on fingerprint after using uh, HPLC and quantification of selected phenolic acid. And uh, the third example deals with uh, assessment of river quality in the South Baltic coast by multivariate methods because uh, it's uh, still our concern, the quality of water. And this work um, is an uh, example of uh, also application of multivariate uh, approach for um, interpretation of results of um, such uh, factors uh, like acidity, like uh, concentration of uh, phosphorus, and, uh, it's connected with the problem of eutrophication of the Baltic Sea. That's why we also have such a result printed. And uh, here is an example of a um, study dealing with macro and micro elementals, elements in some herbal drug mater raw materials and they are water or aqueous extract consumed in Poland. Because in our country still um, many people uh, rely on this uh, folk medicine and it's quite uh, available in the pharmacies, also in, uh, in uh, drug stores and people often use these uh, um, medicinal herbs and try to uh, cure themselves. And interesting issue is uh, to assess how much of this uh, essential macro and micro elements in aqueous extracts can be uh, introduced into uh, human body. And also another example is a um, study dealing as well with herbal drug and interpretation used by neural networks using non-metal contents. And the last example represents the study of thermal, the composition of magnesium salts used as drugs. In the end, I would like to show some photographs of my uh, department and from my city. And here is the main entrance to our faculty of pharmacy, which was uh, quite recently renewed from the sources of uh, Polish government. And here there are future students, my wife and my <laughs> two boys <laughs> and uh, well next we have also a beautiful garden with medicinal plants and also with flowers and trees from many uh, countries and it's beautiful of course in this season uh, like uh, from May to September because now it's uh, not so nice we have winter and uh, here I want to show position of Poland in Europe, it's in general in Central Europe, but I would rather put an accent that you are in Northern Europe because we are especially Gdańsk on the Baltic Sea. Our neighbors are Denmark, Sweden and Baltic states and also a small part of Russia. And uh, it's uh, quite long distance to fly here. And uh, well, continuing, uh, there is an aerial view of the old city of Gdańsk, which was uh, very destroyed during the Second World War and still the work's gone on to restore its main churches and the old city. And uh, here there is the old harbor of Gdańsk at night, popular place for tourists, also they walk along this uh, shore. And also there is a view of uh, main street, Długa, in the old town, in the town hall. And the architecture sometimes is like the Netherlands, because uh, many centuries ago, also people from Netherlands settled in Gdańsk. That's why they follow this 
style of architecture. And here is an example of park in Oliva, which is a suburb of Gdańsk, with a palace. And the uh, Bay of Gdańsk, it was, Sopot is a city near Gdańsk. Uh, it's popular for tourists, also for entertainment. And it has the longest wooden pier in Molo in, in Europe, perhaps. And here is the longest building in Poland, this one, where about 5,000 people live here. And it's long, almost one kilometer. It was built in the 70s for workers for shipyards. It's an example of modern architecture. And uh, you, as I know, you are preparing for football championships in Brazil. And we had such a Euro in 2012. And we also built a stadium. And this uh, stadium was, uh, it was uh, judged as one of the most beautiful in Europe. And here is the final result of this stadium. And it has the color of amber, which is uh, characteristic for uh, Baltic Sea. Well, thank you very much for attention. If you have any questions concerning certified reference materials or other issues, please, uh, I'm waiting. You mentioned a material made in Poland by Ernst. Mm -hmm. Is it common to use herbal medicine in Poland? Well, I must say, uh, it is the alternative way or supplementary way of treatment. Of course, uh, many people, uh, if it is serious disease, they don't uh, rely on this type of medicine. But as for uh, supporting type of treatment, I would say it's quite safe also way of uh, helping people. It's, it's, I must say, yes, it is popular, yes. <laughs> On the slide, you show certain materials, I believe, made in Europe, mm -hmm. elements, and there is a row for chrome. Yeah. I think uh, if they, uh, at the page of speciation net, they give this as an example of available materials for speciation analysis, there should be both forms, I mean, the total and, and, and six. In other case, it should be not included in this. Which elements uh, are present in the herbs? Mainly trace elements, metallic elements, like essential elements like zinc, manganese, iron, and so on. Also some toxic. And I think that also uh, non-metallic element like phosphorus is present in this material. I think it's still available, but because it's quite freshly produced and it's still uh, available, it can be. We can buy it. Possible, I think. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> you should only contact with this um, producer, I think, of this material, and they sell it all over the world. Mm -hmm. I have another one. Do you know if there is any certified material for arsenic in chicken? Uh, I don't know. Probably not, right? I didn't hear because all the examples I presented were rather for seafood yeah. because uh, the consumption of seafood in many countries is very high uh, and uh, probably, probably there is still need for producing of many uh, reference materials for speciation studies because uh, seafood is not the only field which should be taken. Of course, there is a huge problem of environmental studies. Also, uh, these uh, materials which uh, should represent food, I think, like this chicken for you asked. I think, yeah, it's still a lot to do with it's the field of uh, avail availability and production of uh, Certified reference materials for speciation studies. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of soap do you use to prepare these tracks of the herbal mix? Well, I think that uh, mainly it should be water. water. Yeah, because this fraction can be bioavailable. I think, yeah.
if the chemical marker mm -hmm. of the because we, we need a, a chemical marker to to speciate a, a specific herbal medicine. Well, this study uh, was not focused on speciation analysis. Uh, this was uh, the main goal was fingerprint, and uh, the doctor Agnieszka she used the standards of phenolic acid in order to obtain the patterns to for chromatography analysis, and according to the results, she um, analyzed, uh, evaluated the fingerprint of, medicina, of Melissa officinalis. And uh, mm, I, as I know, it's uh, it's a validated procedure. That's why it has been uh, accepted for print in this journal of pharmaceutical and biomedical analysis. I have an idea. What's the validity, the expiration time of the first material that contain mercury? We should uh, probably ask the um, producer. It must be written in the certificate how long you can use it. It's growing, I think, problem because, well, even for the reference materials which have the only total concentration, for if you store the material, even the, uh, observing the, the temperature conditions and other uh, aspects, it can be problematic. It must be checked. Each, uh, in general, for example, uh, spinach leaf, for example, I didn't try to control this, but uh, I think you should have uh, aware, awareness of the fact that it's unstable. And well, one thing is the certificate in which it is written how long you can use it. But also, I found an opinion that uh, some people see, think that you can even use longer this material if you regularly check the uncertainty and the level of uh, analyte, in that case methyl mercury. So uh, I would not just discard the material because uh, it is uh, too old, especially if it is expensive one. Thank mm -hmm. you.